God's grace still prevailed in their life. They might have been locked out of those enterprises, and they might not have had much wealth, but God prevailed. They were not locked out, and neither are you. That same grace is still operating today. No matter what you ex are experiencing, no money, low money, no matter what. No matter what you're experiencing, God's grace is still being given. And I would just dare at this point to ask you to do a mental picture. Just kind of go back in your mind and in your life and ask yourself where you can see God operating in your life, where you can see his grace. When you think about it, we experience God's grace every day in our life. Look around at your neighbor. Take a look. Ask them, how did they make it to church this morning? Ask them. If they told you they walked, it means they had use of their limbs. If they told you they rode in a car, they had use of an automobile. I don't care whether it was a hoopty or or a luxury car, amen, that's grace. I don't care if they caught the van, that's grace, amen. I, I don't care how they got here, if they caught um, the bus, our, our regular transportation, Milwaukee transportation, I don't care how they got here. That was grace operating in their life. Tell them that, turn and tell them, God's grace is still operating in your life. And then I would ask you, is there anyone sitting next to you that's naked? Is there anyone sitting next to you that don't have any shoes on? That's grace. So when we think about God's grace in giving, he gave us some things that some of us just don't deserve. When we think about it. So in moving to my very first point, the grace of God manifests itself in all areas of our life. It manifests itself in our salvation. We are saved by what? Through what? In? All right. The fact that we can claim to be a Christian is grace. When we read Romans 5, 12 through 21, it speaks of the giving of the abundant grace and the gift of righteousness all free gifts that we have, all because we have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We become Christians through God and his unmerited favor in the fact that while we were yet in our sin, he looked down and he decided to, in the flesh, come in his son so that we might have a right. Amen? So when we think about God's grace, that unmerited favor, grace given not because we were so deserving or so intelligent or so beautiful or so handsome, but because God, no amount of our treasure, no amount of service, there's nothing we could have done to pay God for saving us. His amazing grace and salvation is free. And, and, and the good part about it is we all have grace. We all have been given measures of grace. And when when, when that, that we hear it all the time, we say gra grace and mercy. Those two go together. But grace is what we're talking about today. God's grace, living in his grace. That grace that's renewed every morning. When you wake up in the morning, you have renewed grace. You have more grace. God's grace is manifested through the giving of his spirit. When you accepted Jesus Christ, the spirit of God came to live on the inside of you. That spirit which is truth, that spirit which is God, which counsels, comforts, and keeps. Amen. And, and, and when we think about the Holy Spirit operating in our life, the Holy Spirit helps us to will and to do what God has for you to do. So when we give without complaining, it is evidence of the Holy Spirit operating in our lives, in our hearts. God reveals examples of his grace every day in our life. And then when we look at the Apostle Paul, he tells us that God's grace is sufficient. He gives us enough grace. That grace that's renewed 
it is sufficient. We know that we were told that the Apostle Paul had a problem. We don't know what that problem was, but he struggled, and he asked God three times to remove whatever it was that was causing him some difficulty. And, and, and I don't know about you, but I've had some situations like that. Is anybody like me, you've had some situations, and you wanted God to remove them? The Apostle Paul tells us that God gives us enough grace that it is sufficient to take you through any illness, any money situation, any situation with trouble in your relationships, whatever it is, God will give you enough grace to make it through it. And, and we find out that even the pain that we have sometimes, whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whether, no matter what it is, even pain let us know that grace exists. Have you ever thought about that? That that ache that you can feel, you can feel there are some people who can't feel, they're paralyzed. There are some people who have some issues and they can't see. They, there are many different issues, but if you can see, if you can feel, those are things that let us know that God's grace exists. And then the next thing you need to know is that the grace of God is made manifest at all times in your life. When we look at the Apostle Paul telling the Corinthians what the Macedonian Christians had accomplished in spite of their circumstances and situations that they found themselves in, the Church of Macedonia, we see that they were and still are a good example of the grace of God, operating at all times in all areas of their life because we understand that they were hard-pressed, they were stressed, and they, there were some that probably were and was depressed, Amen. But even during their great trials and their afflictions, they were able, when we look at what the apostle tells us in the example, they were able to think of someone else other than themselves. You know, sometimes we walk around and we complain too much about what's going on wrong in our life and don't look at what's right in our life. But the grace of God allows us even to have a mouth and words to come out to complain. Amen. So the grace of God operates at all times in our life. And, and what we see is that with that grace, of, of joy, that, that grace, it points to the fact that God gave them more grace that allowed them to give. And then they had not just a little bit of joy, but they had abundant joy. God touched their hearts. And they were able to move outside of themselves to think of someone else other than themselves. And if we do the same thing, we can have that abundant joy. God, the Spirit of God working on the inside of us. One of the things that in studying this text, I also was brought back to um, the time with my family, with Katrina. Many of you all, and, and I won't call no names, but many of you all during that time, right after when my family and, and friends in Louisiana were in need. They needed water, they needed shoes, they needed clothing, they needed food, they needed many things. The bank did not supply them, okay? The bank told them, you might have money in here, but we're not giving it to you. The amount of money that they gave them was only $200, no matter how much they had. But I even, I said, okay, Julie, that was grace also that they were able to get $200 if they had it. But if they did not, then they found themselves waiting on help, which most of you all know from the story of FEMA. FEMA operated in big cities and not in good measure, amen? They let a whole lot of people down. But I, I looked at my family and I thought about the fact that Grace allowed 20 some people to live in a three bedroom house with one and a half bathrooms. And then grace allowed them to get out in the back with those big old pots that they took for granted, I'm sure, when they did uh, seafood boils and, and fried chicken in, in these huge pots. But grace allowed them to feed other people. God's grace allowed them to give to other people. And, and, and I just began to praise God when I was able to see beyond what they did because they didn't have electricity. They were afraid to turn on the gas because some gas lines would have exploded. Amen? So they were out in the back cooking with fallen trees and all of those things around them, but they fed not only themselves, but they fed anybody that came along. So God's grace in giving is giving what you have to give. Amen? To whoever asks you.
says, if they ask of you, just like Jesus with the donkey says, when you ask of them, tell them, I have need of. God have need of some things that we have. And we are to see that there's grace in us giving. And then the next thing I want to tell you is about the grace of God being the true motive for giving. It is the true motive. When we see the Macedonians, how generously they gave and how freely they gave out of their poverty. In other words, they didn't have a lot to give, but they gave out of what they had. The Macedonians gave because they realized that God had first given to them. If, if, if you remember back in the book of Acts, uh, when the Apostle Paul was trying to go in different directions, and then he saw this man saying, come over here. Well, that was in Asia Minor, in Acacia, where um, the Macedonians lived. That was part of that territory. So God first gave to them. He sent the Apostle Paul on a journey to take care of them, to bring salvation to them, to tell them about the word of God. So having the word of God, having a Bible, to know something, somebody can speak a word to you, whatever, that's the grace of God in giving. God gave us grace through his word. Amen. He gave us grace. So we see that when we refer to the book of Acts and even in our own lives. John 3.16 tells us that uh, the giving of God's love is demonstrated in the giving of his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, while we were yet in our sins. 